Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody this morning? Yeah? Okay. That's your confession anyway, huh? Some of y'all are just confessing that, huh? <laughs> just believe in God. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Let's get right into it. So I put together like a, a little paragraph, if you will. And um, this paragraph, has the camera been started just so I know? Yes. Are we good? Okay. <clears throat> this paragraph kind of sums up, if you will, where we're going to go. So I'm just going to read the paragraph. I don't, think it's, I don't think we have a slide for it, but it should be on your paper or on the app, whatever you choose to use. By faith, we are made right with God. We are given the gift of righteousness. And I'm going to provide scripture for all of this. By faith, we're made right with God. We are given the gift of righteousness. By faith, yeah? Righteousness brings joy. Joy produces strength. Strength gets us through the trials. Trials build our endurance. Endurance defines our character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And then you just circle around and do it all over again. That's our life cycle as, as we go through life and as we do things. It starts with faith. Yeah. That's where it starts. Faith in what? Faith in believing that you're a son or a daughter of God and you are His righteousness. Hallelujah. You're not a sinner. You're not poor old me. You're a glorified child of God. Thank you, Lord. Didn't Jesus pray in John 17, Lord, I, Father, I ask you to give them the glory you've given me. Why? So that we may be one. It takes the glory of God for all of our differences to stay together. We're all different personalities. We've all been built differently by our King. I'll be honest with you. Some of you rub me wrong. But I love you. And it's because of the glory of God and the grace of God that we can stand shoulder to shoulder, right? Right? Hallelujah. Some of you are thinking, is it, is it me? Is it me? I said it for emphasis. It ain't nobody in here. I get along with everybody. Everybody knows that. I, I, I'm like a hybrid. I can get along with anybody. Okay. Romans chapter 4. Let's start reading some scripture. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. If his good deeds, speaking of Abraham, if Abraham's good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have something to boast about. But that was not God's way. Stop right there. <laughs> I'm going to be quick. If Abraham's good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have something to boast about, but that was not God's way. God didn't want to give us... Anything that we could take and call our own, if you will, and stand in pride and boast about being able to get somewhere because of something that we did, it would remove his kingship. Yeah, that's a good word. And it would remove his lordship. Mm -hmm. And it would take us out of the grace of God. Because it's only by the grace of God that we are who we are. Not by anything we do. You see, we can work and work and work and work and work all we want trying to get into a position of righteousness, and that's called religion. But it means nothing. Because it's not motivated by love. It's motivated by wanting to get into a particular position with the Father. I'm working to get into God's grace. I'm working to get into His righteousness. I'm working so that the favor of God would be released on me. I've got news for you. Whether you work or not, the favor of God is on your life. It's your choice whether you use that favor to go work. See the difference? 
You're not working to get into the favor of God. You're already favored. Now what are you going to do? You don't work to get into the righteousness of God. You work out of the righteousness. You live righteously because you are righteous. Whether you believe it or not. Well, pastor, I don't feel very righteous. Well, that's a whole other subject. But you're the righteousness of God whether you believe it or not. And that was God's way because we are supposed to be motivated and work out of love for other people and love for God. So we have nothing to boast about. We can't say I've done all this so that I can get somewhere in God. We say I've done all this because I love you. We've done all this because I love God. See the difference? Abraham loved God. He didn't do, Abraham's good deeds weren't because he was trying to get somewhere with God. God already showed up and called him the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. God already showed up and called him the chosen. There, he already had it. You already have it. You're God's chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're God's righteousness. You're God's son. You're his daughter. That's it. No wonder we can move mountains. No wonder we cannot be overcome. No wonder a thousand can fall at the one side and ten thousand at the other, but it doesn't come near us. No wonder we can pray over a camp when it's fire all around and the embers blow out. And there's a ring around it. Yeah. Hallelujah. That was a Hume Lake story, by the way. The big fires that went through Oakhurst a few years ago, Joy and I stood in prayer for one of his brother's trailer was right in the middle of the fires. And they could not get home to get their animals. Their animals were in the trailer. We prayed and asked God to protect the animals. An aerial, an aerial shot showed the fire went whoop. Yeah. A miracle. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're special? We really are. Yeah. We really are. Amen. We're special. Yeah. It's not something we can boast about because we didn't do anything to become special. Yeah. But God made us special. Dang it, that was only verse 1. If Abraham's good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have something to boast about. But that was not God's way. Next verse. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Old Testament. Yeah. If it was good enough in Old Testament, how much greater in this New Testament? Wow. My, my. Wow. When people work, their wages are not a gift. Uh huh? Let me tell you something. I don't go to work Monday through Friday because I'm motivated by love for what I do. Okay? I go uh, because I get, I get something. Uh huh. They pay me. That's why I go work. There you go. I don't get paid to do this. I do this because I love to do this. This is my. You all. You all are my motivation for doing this, and everybody else that's out there, the souls that we're gonna win, and the people that we're gonna build up and help carry their destiny. That's why I do this. But Monday through Friday, <laughs> I do it because I get a wage. Hallelujah. <laughs> so when people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. Mm -hmm. But people are counted as righteous not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. So our good deeds and our work doesn't make us righteous. It makes us holy. 
and I'm going to get there in a minute. It doesn't make us righteous. We're already righteous. You got quick fingers this morning. <laughs> but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. So righteousness is a free gift. Stop right here. Go to Romans 5.17. Romans 5, 17, yes. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. Let's just stop right there for a second, okay? Adam's one act, it doesn't say Eve's one act. I believe Adam had an opportunity to redeem some things after Eve ate, because she ate and nothing happened. And Adam's like, oh, whew, nothing happened. Let me see that thing. That's where he went wrong. Because the commandment was given to Adam, not to Eve. And it was Adam's job to rise up and be the head of his household and smack that apple out, or, or not apple, <laughs> we, everybody says apples. I say apple because I don't like apple products. It's one bite, right? <laughs> Smack that one bite apple out of her hand. I'm an Android guy. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we'd all be living in the garden. Well, I'm sure someone after them, one of their sons probably would have went for that tree anyway. It probably wouldn't have gone very far. But, but look, at, look at that. Get that in, in your mind. Get that picture. The sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over everybody. Sin, death, deceit, everything entered the race of man. Evil entered the race of man. One act. Sickness, disease. It took Satan a while to figure that one out, right? I mean, we used to live 900, 700, 600, 800 years. We lived a long time. It took Satan a long time to figure out how to kill us. It didn't take him a long time how to figure out how to murder us. That he figured out real fast. Just some food for thought. But one man's act did so much. You can see where I'm going here. You can see where I'm going here. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. But even greater. Look at the greatness of the one man's sin. But even greater, the one man's death for all. Huh? And resurrection. Even greater. I like that. So that right there tells me it doesn't matter what kind of sin or temptation or darkness tries to come after me even greater. Huh? The size of the darkness that comes after us, even greater. That's why he said, fear not. 365 times. Fear not. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. All who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. That verse does not mean you're going to triumph on the day that you stop breathing. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about right now. You don't triumph over sin and death when you take your last breath. You triumph over sin and death right now. This is a right now gospel. Huh? This is a right now gospel. There is no sin that can stay up, that can overcome you. There is no death that can take your life. 
Do we need to make the words bigger? No, there was a pair of glasses down here, and I was trying to figure out whose they were. Oh, okay. <laughs> they weren't yours. You put them on, I saw you go cross-eyed. I did. <laughs> Where are we at? Romans 5.17. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, I'm, I'm just having a hard time, you know. Listen, you will live in triumph once you receive it. Matter of fact, you have received it, you just don't have understanding yet. So many people, we've got sons and daughters glorified, with the, walking around righteous, full of righteousness, filled with the Spirit of God, and they're walking around overcome by sin. Overcome by guilt, overcome by shame, overcome by darkness. Why? Because they don't understand. They don't believe it. And they don't know who they are. It's by faith. But how can they believe on him they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? Where have our preachers gone? How can they preach lest they be sent? Okay. Let's go back to Romans chapter 4. I believe we're at verse 5. No. Let's start at verse 4, and we're going to read. We're going to read. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they've earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God and forgive sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Did you see the key word in there? Happiness. Happiness. David spoke of this when he described how happy we are because we're declared righteous without working for it. If we're not happy, then we don't understand Paul's revelation. If we're not happy, then we don't understand that we are the righteousness of God, a glorified son and daughter, and we don't have to work for anything. We just get to be motivated by love and love people. You owe no man nothing but to love them. Don't feel like you have to do anything. You get to operate out of love. Isn't that great? That's why Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Just love people. That's it. Don't feel like you have to do anything. Just love them. And because you're driving down the street and you see someone without shoes, you're going to go, oh, oh brother, I ain't got no shoes. You can turn around. And you can take your own shoes off. And you can say, here, take my shoes. I can go get another pair. Obviously, you can't. Motivated by love. Ah. Not religion. The works of religion person will go, dang it. Oh, I got to give them a pair of shoes. I'm going to turn around. Here, take the shoes. Jesus loves you. <laughs> okay. Now, who are you trying to convince, you or him? Hallelujah. If there is no joy in our lives, we don't understand who we are. Because when we understand who we are, an abundance of joy is going to flow out. I mean, you're not going to walk around like, you know, some weird drunken guy laughing and, you know, giggling at everything. But, you know, there's going to be joy in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what my title means when I say righteousness brings joy. It's not necessarily living righteously that brings joy. It's understanding who you are, being the righteousness of God, and the grace that we live in. That's what should bring us joy. 
And it's out of the joy, out of the love, out of righteousness, out of grace, out of who we are, that we live righteously. And there's joy in it. Because it's not hard. It's not hard when you understand that's who you are. It is not hard for a teapot to do a teapot because the teapot knows it's a teapot. It's not hard. It's hard for that teapot to be a wheelbarrow because it ain't a wheelbarrow. And it's hard for you to be anything else other than the righteousness of God and a lover of all men. It's hard for you. I know it is. I too am a you. Hallelujah. And you know, I know that there's a lot, not us, we don't have this problem. But there are those that have a problem admitting that they're the righteousness of God. They, they have no problem calling themselves a sinner saved by grace. But they have a problem calling themselves the righteousness of God. Those are the ones that we need to bring in close and hold tight. Because they're right there. They're our brothers and sisters for one. And they're being tormented. If you don't understand that you're the righteousness of God and you're just a sinner saved by grace and you gotta, you got to you know, prove something to God and other people, that's torment. Yeah. you got to draw them in. And say, listen, man, God loves you. I love you. You don't have to do anything. You owe no man nothing. Just love him. Just love him. Let the revelation of love and grace and righteousness just begin to transform their heart and mind and, and we're going to see someone sprout. Let me say this right here. Because this is my core. You guys are my core, right? This is my core. We're not here to build a church. We're here to build people. I just want that to sink in. We're not here to build numbers. We're not here to build a church. We're not here to build programs. We're here to build people. And when we build people, programs will birth. When we build people, ministries will birth. When we build people, the church will birth. But we build people. Okay. Okay, so we got to take a little bit of a, of a side road, and then we'll come back. <clears throat> Romans chapter 6, verse 19. Being righteous and living righteous are two separate, two separate teachings here. Living righteously does not make you righteous. Right? We've already covered that. Living, righteousness does not, living righteously does not make you righteous. You're already the righteousness of God. Living righteously consecrates you and makes you holy. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand this. So when you read certain scriptures of Paul when he talks about slaves and slavery, he's using it as an illustration. He's not saying you're a slave of God. He's using it as an illustration to help you understand your position in Him. And how we should be motivated by these things. That's why he uses the word slave. It's a motivation. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I'm using the illustration of slavery to help you understand this. Previously... You let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin... Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. Holy. 
Slaves to righteous living. Slaves don't have a choice. He's not saying we're slaves of God. He's using it as an illustration. We're slaves to righteous living because we're motivated by the love of God that's in our hearts. We don't have a choice because we're motivated and overcome by God's love for people. That's what Paul's saying here. And when we live righteously, we become holy. Holiness is not something that's given. That is something we have to walk into. We've got to walk into holiness. Because it's a lifestyle. It's choices we make. It's our character we walk in. It's, it's loving people. It's being motivated by love. God is holy. Not because he's a prude or because he doesn't do anything. He's purely motivated by love. He's holy. Go ahead. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do what is right. And what was the result? You're now ashamed of the things you used to do. Things that end in eternal doom. But now, right? This is a right now gospel. But now, you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Well, pastor, I don't know. I just, I have such a hard time. This, the, right now, you are free from the power of sin. Don't let your experience dictate the word of God. You're free from the power of sin. Or not, you are. And have become slaves of God. Why slaves? Because His love motivates us and compels us. Hallelujah. Now, because it's a right now gospel... Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. A free gift. A free gift. When we fully understand the finished work of Christ, there's joy in our hearts. We could sit there on the couch, the TV black, the drapes pulled, the sunshine coming in, the birds tweeting, uh -huh, and just sit there and smile. Yeah? And begin to think about the Lord and His presence manifests. Ha <laughs> ha. Peace enters your heart. And you can just sit there. You can just sit there. Hallelujah. I like it. I like it. Okay, our last couple of verses. Last couple of verses on, on chapter 4, and then we're done. Last couple of verses. Uh, let's, start at, uh, let's start at verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Verse 7. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Verse 8, yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Hallelujah. There's joy in the message. The gospel is good news. <laughs> Amen. 
the revelation of the finished work of the Christ, the finished work of the cross, is joyful. For the joy that was set before him, we should have joy in our hearts. If we have a lack of joy, get into Romans. Memorize this book. Ask God to give you the revelation he gave Paul. And let this book open up in your heart and mind. There's joy in it. Your identity is in Romans. Who you are. It's right here. It's right here. Don't come to me looking like you've sucked on lemons saying you know Romans. <laughs> you don't know Romans. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't know Romans. But if you come to me with a big old smile and you say, I know Romans. I know you know Romans. No, I know Romans. No, I know you know Romans. <laughs> and you start going like that pretty soon. You're laughing and crying and all you've said is, I know Romans and I know you know Romans. Yeah. We're weird people, but we got joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd rather be weird and joyful than, you know, whatever the other opposite would be of that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God, I thank you for joy. I thank you, Lord, that having and understanding our identity, God, brings joy to our life. Hallelujah. And God, you are, you know, your word says, Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights. And, and God, I thank you that you are a gift giver. And they're good gifts. And they're perfect gifts. And Lord, I thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit. And in that, there's fruit. There's peace. There's joy. There's love. There's faith. There's hope. There's patience. There's long-suffering. There's endurance, God. There's all of these things that we should be operating in and walking in as believers, as people of faith. And I thank you for that, God. I ask you to manifest your fruit in our lives, God. Let us be who you say that we are. And let us walk according to your word and your promises. And we will love people. Lord, flood our hearts with your love. And we will allow love to motivate us. Hallelujah. Amen? I like it.